Answer them in the opposite order. It turns out that I am indeed doing intros and we were not recording. But so, now we are. <laughs> happy to see you. Here we are coming out of the gate like uh, something that comes out of a gate quickly. <laughs> Maybe a horse in a horse race. Um, hi, how are you? Tis the season for binary jazz. Joined by my friends as always, uh, Allison, Allison Plus on the internet. Chris, uh, Jazz Sequence on the internet, uh, and Binary Gary on the internet. Jude is scared by whatever that blurry object was that ran by the house a few minutes ago. This is a show about stuff. Uh, if you caught our last episode, it's about a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff we don't know much about even after talking about said stuff. If you're new, I suggest starting with a different episode because I'm uh. not going to tell you how it works. You'll figure it out. Let's go. Oh, is that like that's my cue? Okay. I mean, I don't know. I just I, I kind of figured Chris would hop in on the let's go and maybe <laughs> clean up a little of the intro there to make sure I didn't miss anything. Like we're uh, binary uh, jazz at us or uh, Seattle upload us really on good. iTunes, like us on uh, on uh, Reddit. I don't know. We're not on Tumblr, but if you want to create like a binary jazz Tumblr account, maybe we are. I don't know it. Binary jazz Tumblr. Uh, I mean, the be? best the best holiday Fanfic gift, account. The best holiday gift for your loved ones is a review for us on yes. iTunes. <laughs> yes, that is that is the best gift for your loved ones. It's good. Let me make a note of that because I am really behind on holiday shopping. So if you have a secret Santa and you're not quite sure what to get them, write us a review on iTunes. How funny would that be for Company Secret Santa? Like you open it like a box like and it's out. like, I wrote a review on your behalf for this podcast you don't listen to. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe now you will, since you have positively reviewed it. Yeah, really. spread the word. How uh, are you? All, all of those things that Gary said are accurate. We're on the internet and we're on various streaming services. How are you both doing? Do you want the real answer or the short answer? I want the real answer. Let's be real. <laughs> it's tough. It's December. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> legit. Yeah. Just realize how prominent this poster is on my video. <laughs> 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 it's okay. It fits the vibe. Yeah. Of, like attacking small communities. Which is what you do day <laughs> in, day out, like Apparently. a boss. It's why I live in the largest uh, populated city in, uh, in, oh no, the largest city by landmass. Yes, that's the one I live in. Largest city by landmass in Florida. It doesn't quite have the ring to it. No, it sure doesn't, does it? It doesn't roll off the tongue very well. No. Maybe that's um, why on our signs it says, welcome to America's Logistics Center, which is also a lie, but. <laughs> it doesn't roll off the tongue and it's not true. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. Florida. Sounds like. <laughs> Um, uh, so I'm really excited about the topic today. Excited okay. might be a bit of a stretch, but like I keep trying to like spread the word. Like I've been trying to drop it into conversations more so then people will be like, what does that mean? And I'm like, well, let me tell you. <laughs> um, that means everybody that is in your general circle will already, will already have a, a preview into this episode. Probably already knows because I discovered it a few weeks ago. And so I've been trying to like sprinkle it throughout Make, I want to make it catch on before before this episode drops. <laughs> have you carefully been trying? Oh, oh, that'll be fun. Everyone knows what it is before the episode drops, except for Chris and I. Have you um, been trying to avoid using it then amongst us? Yes. Well, because I got like I got really. I don't know why. It, it just it's one of those things where like when something catches your fancy, and you're just like, that's a really cool. Like I'm glad that exists. Like it's so random. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. It's you'll you'll never use it, but like <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine it's with perfect. that. Um, the word is possible Q. Possible Q? It's all caps. P O S S L Q. Wait. <laughs> yeah, that's the right answer. Wait. P O S S L Q. P 
P-O-S-S-L-Q, possible Q. <laughs> I'll possibly use it in the it's, it's a It's a pseudo acronym that stands for possibly lesbian or queer. Oh, that's actually like seemingly reasonable, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a couple letters that are missing if it was going to be accurate. Um, in university, I had a possible Q. It's more than that, and then that's like kind of like an Allison trivia, like what, what's going wow. on? <laughs> it must stand for something, Chris. Plain old. Professor of Social Studies. <sighs> <laughs> I, I have a question about that. So sometimes people call it social studies, and sometimes yeah. it's called other things. Like in elementary school, it was social studies, and then we just like transferred to history, basically. Yep. Is there any, does anybody know any of the reasoning behind that? Uh, social studies is more uh, inclusive in general, which means you can be studying uh, contemporary things, whereas history oh. is obviously history. And there might, I mean, there may be like an, I, I'm <sighs> totally shooting out of my ass, but there might be like an unofficial, <laughs> like agreed upon, uh, like date that makes, a thing history versus social, social studies. studies like if you're studying the civil rights movement that's more social studies for some reason even though it happened in history but if you're studying the civil war that's history it's more yeah uh i will buy that i like i don't that know if you're you right gave, or wrong but it seems legit i like that you gave the cautionary thing like that's not what this whole podcast is about <laughs> you're like well i'm not sure but me i mean yeah i mean it, it's totally <laughs> totally uh, on on brand to just you know completely make some random shit up i just want to make sure that people don't aren't like trying to like oh chris said on binary jazz that this is what history means so i think this warrants a meta conversation in that uh i i don't feel like i bullshit my way through everything i do in life my bullshit quotient is much higher on this show than it is in the rest of my life um <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm feeling a little defensive now. Like, I need that disclaimer. I'm not entirely when you're, shit. <laughs> no, well, you're both, like, when your kids come to you, is there any part of you, when they ask a question you don't know, are you like, let's go look it up? Or are you like, well, the sky is blue because, and then you go down this road of making something up because you're like, I want to amuse myself. <laughs> the answer is it very much depends on the conversation. It's okay. very situational. I yeah. would agree. A lie will that. make stuff up with no hesitation when the opportunity arises. Uh, I will. I will make stuff up, but with hesitation because I'm not. I'm not able to come up with something uh, on the fly a lot of times. I'll be like, uh, I don't know. Oh, actually, what it means is like after I've had a few minutes to think about it. <laughs> yeah. To the point that when I say things that are actually true and sound ridiculous, like, uh, uh, what were the banana? strings called something bundles flow and bundles flow and bundles when i remarked about flow and bundles the kids were like it's totally not what they're called dad i'm like <laughs> it really is and they're like they... nah i think you're full of it <laughs> well that's some good though that's back. good because someday someday they will they will learn what a flow and bundle is and they'll be like damn it I think we may have Googled it. I don't know. Or I think maybe I just said, okay, Our dad was a know. scientist. <laughs> oh, they... No, he was a back alley astronaut. We... Back alley astronaut. <laughs> Why do I... I should buy that domain for myself for Christmas. Back alley for Christmas. <laughs> back alley astronaut .com. Oh. <sighs> You tend to go the dot com route or do you go for... Oh, yeah. Uh, no, this one might be that space. That space um, is pretty pricey, but it's worth it. I'm worth it. <laughs> oh, apparently we're under attack now. <laughs> Running the kids are getting home. It's better safe than sorry, though, with your protection. <sighs> Especially so, given the so fossil cue, Jerry, go cryptozoology characters parading past my house. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Possible Q. You like that poll? Cryptozoology. Yeah. I remembered. That was, yeah. that was one that I was convinced everybody knew about. And then everybody was like, Allison, nobody's into what you're into. No one knows Weird. what cryptozoology is. 
Well, I think we firmly established that Chris and I are not everybody. <laughs> In a lot of ways. Well, I just Q real, yeah, is, when you realize that you're, I don't know, because like then the exact opposite happens to me where I think nobody listens to this band and then I try to buy tickets for it and then I'm like, oh, I live in a huge city and like tons of people listen to this band. What am I thinking about? Do um, you, so when that happens, to avoid answering the question that Chris asked, when that happens, do you ever um, think to yourself like, gee, there are a lot more cool people in the city than I thought there were? I do, but I don't, like, where you find, like, where do you find people? Like, I don't leave the house. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not in my house either. I agree. So, like, I've got my, like, nice little bubble. And, like, right. some, of, some people, there's overlap that I can drag I, them to certain shows. I don't know that I was suggesting, like, you need to meet those people. I think I was just observing that, like, do you ever, like, just think, like, wow, that's a lot of, not a lot of neat people around here that I don't know. I mean... I think I feel like that in general, though, about Toronto, where I'm like, oh, there's a lot of cool people here. But I think that's the thing, is that I'm like, oh, but oh. I'm not cool. Like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Like, I see cool people all the time walking around, and I'm like, hmm, that's not me. <laughs> I both have and don't have that experience in Salt Lake City. Really? Yes. <laughs> because I, I will, because, so in Salt Lake City specifically, there's, like, a very strong, uh, like, counterculture um, mm -hmm. because it's the most, you know, it's the most populous and most metropolitan city in, in Utah, um, which then also makes it more diverse and more liberal. Um, but you still have the undercurrent of like the Mormon history in the state. So a Time lot out. of, a lot of those people shady undercurrent would have been fine in that sentence. <laughs> a <laughs> lot of, a lot of people even don't censor yourself on our behalf. Even the cool people come from like Mormon backgrounds and they're not Mormon. And so like, there's a lot of people who are legitimately cool. There's some people who are now cool. And then there's some people that seem cool, but are really still not. <laughs> I feel seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're legitimately not the level that you have to, to be concerned with but yeah yeah i mean it's like they seem cool but really they're an asshole like yeah they're going to a cool like they're going to the red elvis's concert but they're still like some dude bro that um you know married his his current wife when he was uh when he got back from his mission in 18 and and ignores her and their kids yeah hmm. Hmm. yeah that's still good Hard pass. Hard pass on being friends with those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, you know, you seem you seem really cool, but actually you're a gun toting libertarian that I didn't I didn't even know that and was to <sighs> totally into like, you know, gun rights and shooting on the range and trying to invite me to go places like that. Not that I'm calling out any like, individual. When I was when I was little, my parents it was mortifying to me as as a kid. My parents would ask people's parent before I went over to their house. They would ask them if they had any guns in the house, and if they wow. did, they wouldn't let me go, um, which was mortifying as a kid. And like yeah. I understand more about the background story about why that was the case later on. But like as a kid, I was like, this is bullshit. Like. <laughs> And it's yeah. super embarrassing to be like, I thought I could come to your house, but now I can't because of this we, thing. When, when the kids or when Gavin was still in school, um, he had a friend who really, really liked him. And he was kind of mm, lukewarm. Um, and he went over to the kid's house. The kid had a really rough like home life. And uh, which I think was part of the reason why he like was super latched on to Gavin. Mm -hmm. um, and it turned out that we found out later that their dad had guns, plural, I believe. Um, and after that point, it was like, we should make a rule. Like we should find out that's a thing that we should know about. Like we were kind of pissed off that we didn't know about that to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, he didn't go over. We didn't ever say explicitly this is why, I don't think at the time. We might have said it later, and then I think we did. I don't think it came up later, um, but then I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people who are have a license to, to concealed carry, and um, 
and you know like i don't know everybody who's like I, I i used to think i could tell a gun owner by looking at them and i have learned since that is absolutely not true yeah <laughs> yeah such a weird thing about the fabric of the u.s i don't i don't care for it <laughs> no it's so bizarre yeah like i i i we had a um i may have told you guys about this um we had a Sensi not a sensitivity training, but some some sort of like uh, uh, oh a bias awareness sort of workshop thing um, oh, yeah. at our last retreat, and I realized and vocalized that I have a bias against gun owners. And one of my friends and coworkers says, "I own a gun." Like, do you think those things about me? Like, I like well, like now that you said it, I kind of do, but like I didn't before you said it. <laughs> like, yeah. You're like, damn yeah. it, that's the bias. But yeah, but I mean, yeah, exactly. And, but, <laughs> but I learned through that interaction that I have no idea what a gun owner looks like. Yeah. And well, no, mm. that's, that's what's so fascinating. And I'm, I remember feeling as a child that it, it felt so arbitrary. And like, I didn't, I just didn't understand my parents' full reasoning, even though like, I guess I wasn't very bright. I wasn't really, I was just concerned about my like, my social situation. Um, yeah, totally more so than like my safety <laughs> but also like because like my parents are basically just like we don't know like they could have a gun safe they could be like the most responsible people in the world but the problem is is like we don't know that yeah. and like and also shit happens and like stuff happened with like a friend of my dad's when he was younger and he never forgot it and so like that was that like he was just like nope like hard, hard yeah. math like you'll find other friends <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he was also just like or they can come over here like he's like that's like that's a thing um so it's just so it's so bizarre that it's like one of those i don't know like i'm a non-parent so like but i'm just like like you don't have enough to worry about on your plate already <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, this yeah. conversation is making me like I can like tell my. I know I'm bringing anxiety. I'm, I'm like, bringing anxiety to. I'm bringing, I'm bringing anxiety to Gary's world, and I'm not intending to. Possible Q. Yeah. Potential uh, so, offset. Potential offset of social situations. Laying <laughs> quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Q like someone's? That, that's a thing. Right, Q is someone's like something quotient, right? Q, no, uh, some bullshit measurement. I mean, Q, like IQ, sure. Oh, well, I failed that test, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> the letters, right? Q is a character on James Bond. Yeah, Q is what they do in the UK. Very well, learn at a young age. Yes, but not with the, <laughs> uh, not as the letter as represented by the letter Q. So one of my problems, uh, of course, is I'll come back to code and me. Um, the word Q, I, I type, and I'm not sure. It's, like, it's hard to stop the U, E, U, E, U, E alternation. <laughs> so I tend to abbreviate NQ with EQ. And for the longest time, someone was like, I work with was like, what does this stand for? Like, what, why, why do you call this EQ? And I, it, to me, it was very obvious because the word is NQ, function name was EQ. I could type EQ with two letters. It didn't seem like a, an unreadable abbreviation, but, um, but, uh, but interestingly enough, like, you know, you think about, we use verbose variable names and this was a situation where I did not use a verbose function name and it was not discoverable, even though in my head, like it seemed to make perfect sense. See, I would read EQ and think equalizer. It's, I would think, emotional quotient. <laughs> and that's binary jazz, everyone. <laughs> I'd be like, wow, this is like a really deep algorithm if we're getting into the emotion. <laughs> well, I think the lesson learned is the friends we made along the way or something. <laughs> the lesson learned is that Gary is wrong. It's one of those years. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It was Douglas Adams in, I think, Hitchhiker's Guide. I think the first, the first in the, uh, uh, 
it's a trilogy of four books, five books. What does he call it? A trilogy of five books. Yeah. Anyway, uh, somebody says I never got the hang. I think Arthur says something about never getting the hang of Tuesdays, Thursdays. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that sounds that sounds accurate. I never got the hang of Tuesdays. I I, I like that idea in general. Yeah. I think that reading that colored me for a while, thinking like, oh, I, I must have a bad day of the week. What day would it be for me? What day did I never get the hang of? Which is absolutely ridiculous because it's just seven arbitrary words we assign to things to keep a semblance of progression. Oh my God, we time is so crushing. Oh. We know we're absolutely shite at all the days, so why? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I find interesting about, about those seven arbitrary words is that the current uh, calendar system, in the current calendar system, they're wrong. Oh, yes. They are all wrong, especially because Monday. Monday should be day one, and Tuesday should be day mm -hmm. two. Yeah, so do you not have that set on your, your calendar? Like... I think most calendars have the, the option I mean, set the either Sunday or Monday is your default. Wall, I have the calendar I have on the wall starts with Sunday. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, the calendar that I have in my computer lets me start on Monday because sure, I don't, sure. I don't, Computers why would I have a calendar on the wall when I have a, anything you tell them to do. That's great. But the calendar right there says it, the week starts on Sunday and so therefore the week starts on Sunday. Ye old analog. I. You don't participate? In a printed calendar? No, I'm not you even sure. I mean, like, so what? Many, I, you could get so many space themed ones. <laughs> I totally could. You're absolutely right. But then, what the heck would I do with it? I look at January until wall. sometime in July and be like, oh, maybe I should flip the month. You know what date it was? Well, that's what I. That's why I work. it says it's Thursday the twelfth. Okay. But what? And presumably, what I know what month it is. Although I didn't on Sunday. I thought it was still November Sunday. Only it was the only a week or so into the month. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was only a week in. It was, it was like eight days in, I think. So I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm the best at changing the calendar on the wall. I've gone <laughs> like entire months, like forgetting that I like needed to do that. But we should go back sort of visually through the problem. episodes and see and what see month it is. If the calendar <laughs> picture on the wall has changed, yeah, yeah. There'll be like a long block where Gary's wearing a purple shirt and Chris has the same calendar up. Yeah. <laughs> People be like, "Did you just shoot all these episodes in one day?" I'll be like, binary jazz is more of a, a time machine experience because. <laughs> the best part will be like, if you look, you'll see like my beard like come and go like, during the episodes. <laughs> so, so what we're saying is that if you're only listening to the audio of this podcast, you should check out and subscribe, like and subscribe our YouTube channel so that we can finally get a, a YouTube username that is binary jazz and not uh, some long string of numbers and letters. How does that work? So like when there's a certain number of followers, we can have a real name. Otherwise yes. we're just like, yes, really? Yes. Otherwise we're not legit. That's crazy. We need 10 subscribers. <laughs> and sadly we're lacking those 10 still. I subscribed, I think. No, um, I'm pretty sure I did too. Uh, I think I did two, and that would be like three. <laughs> okay. All right, seven more people. We can do this. <laughs> Get that number Yeah, I'm a. Uh, have no shame. Okay. Fossil cube. Having no shame in the search for a URL. <laughs> Having no shame in dragging people to our YouTube channel and forcing them to subscribe at gun at, at finger point. Why wouldn't people want to see all of this? I know, right? Um, <laughs> finger point. You should do it. <laughs> Angry face. I have a lot of feelings today. Possible you is um, now I mentally associate it with something that has to do with college, but it probably doesn't. Um, no, you can have a postal queue at any age. <laughs> now it's like a trivia. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now, yeah, now, now I just have uh, Bjork in my head. Like, possibly lesbian and queer. <laughs> I, I Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was something a bit more like, yeah, now I'm like, oh, maybe my, 
maybe it's not as exciting as I thought it was. I don't know. Oh no, I'm pretty excited to find out what it is. <laughs> you'll hear the answer and you'll be like, that's what you find exciting? That's really bizarre. <laughs> that's more likely. Uh, <laughs> presentation. Allison says to the guy that like was watching a rocket launch that barely made it across the Carmen line yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah, happy full moon, everybody. We're yeah. here. Oh, is that today or tonight or was it last night? It was last night, twelve twelve on the twelfth of December. Oh, word! I thought last night it was kind of hazy when I walked outside, which meant like the glow was just encompassing, and I thought how oh, beautiful. And we, have a, we have a skylight. We have a skylight that's just above uh, the stairway up up the stairs that go upstairs, and when the <laughs> moon is at a, when the moon is at a certain position, you can see it directly, like it like it positions itself right above the skylight. So we call it our moonlight because mm. we can. That's fantastic. The moon. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. I love that. Oh, and then you don't have to go outside and do that weird thing where you're exactly. like trying to yourself. Yeah, we, yeah we, just, we just look up and see if it's in the right place. And that, don't cool lean too far over too, the banister. What's cool about that too is you can see like, you know, like you go, you, it's in the right place, uh, you know, at one time and you come back later and it's moved and the angle is different. You have to be in a different part of the, uh, in a different part of the hallway to, to see it. Hallway slash stairs. Hmm. I like that though, the moon arc. Yeah. Uh, presentation of secretly solicited uh, liquor. Well, nah, just liquor. Quotes. <laughs> LQ, Quotes. Could, LQ could be liquor. So, pop, presentation of secretly solicited liquor, which you Ooh, like can have as a kid. <laughs> The term, a term from the prohibition. Yeah. You must think yeah. I was up to no good in university. <laughs> well, I might have been. I Ooh, might have been Zima. Guilty, I might have been <laughs> guilty of presenting uh, secretly solicited liquor. <laughs> okay, should we get down to business? Do you want to know what it is? Sure, yeah, let's find let's out. Let's get down to brass tacks. We've got, we've got some questions we could go through. So, yeah. so that's a very okay. Joe Biden thing to say. So, oh. brass tacks. Let's get down to brass, and you have to point when you do it. Don't. Down to don't, brass tech. Don't. Yeah, we don't need any of that malarkey. Malarkey. <laughs> there was the head coach in Jacksonville was Mike Malarkey several years ago, which, come on. This team sucked when he was the coach. Was there anybody oh, shocked I, to find yeah, this out? Yeah, exactly. No. I mean, yeah. one winning season in 12 years. Anyway, Postle Q. Postle Q. It's an abbreviation or acronym for person of opposite sex sharing living quarters. Oh. <laughs> I love oh. that. Oh. So it was coined in the late 1970s by the census because they were trying to figure out how, like, the prevalence of cohabitation because more and more people were like living <laughs> out of the block. But they oh, scandal! They, you know, <laughs> they basically like they used it as a term, but I mean they're making a lot of assumptions, right? Because they're assuming that you're in some sort of maybe romantic relationship, maybe not. Like, who knows? Like. Um, and so then it gained a bit of momentum in the 80s, but then they actually started using the term unmarried partner in the 1990 census. And so mm. then that kind of like pushed Postle Q wow. completely out of, <clears throat> out of the running because they had something a lot more specific. Kind of made it up a bit obsolete. But yeah. So, say it again. Of opposite sex sharing living quarters. Yeah. Huh. And it was in so an episode they, it was in an episode like, of <clears throat> an episode Frasier, what? Frasier and Lilith describe themselves as possible cues. So it does not specifically so it doesn't specify whether the person of the opposite sex that is sharing living quarters is no. a partner or not. They could be either. Either, yeah. So I mean, technically, yeah, I, I feel like I we could just have a fossil queue right now. I mean, like if we're yeah <laughs> being vague. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the census is uh, really trying to shoehorn something there. It just seems yeah, like it would be effective to say there are two adults living in this building. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah. I'm good. I'm good with that number. I can live with that. Sufficient for me. Yeah. Without the assumptions for people, census takers. I. It's, yeah. Did you? Yeah. What's your a, relationship? None of your damn business. There's an interesting. There's an interesting bit. Uh, there's a video that that was uh, recently on John Oliver where he was talking about the census. And he showed this video that's on probably YouTube or something where it's some dude, um, some libertarian dude, who is uh, refusing to to cooperate with the census taker. Um, and so he's just like, he's just basically trolling her every time she asks a question. He's like, well, I don't think you have the right to ask that question. Like, I don't have to answer that. Yeah. And and she just gets kind of sassy with him. And it's it's... It's fascinating that she doesn't just pull a gun and shoot him in the face because he's being a dick, but uh, uh, yeah, um, it's 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 amusing, although more at his expense than hers, I suppose, because um, he's being such an ass. Um, Watch and I, I don't even understand like why uh, why you would be like harass the census taker. Yeah. Trying to it's do a vol that. is it a volunteer position or paid position? I don't know. I don't know. That has nothing to do with her, whether they're harassed or not. I'm just curious. I don't, I wasn't like, I want to say they're paid because I want to say that the census is like a federal, like, like yeah. a budgetary thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we have some questions. Uh, most of them are from Allison, so but there's a couple, questions. there's a couple that aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them says John Renator Slack app support with no content. Uh, so that's a thing. <laughs> did you provide support uh no okay <laughs> right. um i guess it's somebody at, with a shopify.com uh email address so i wonder if, if shopify is using john genre, genre that'd be kind of awesome actually mm -hmm. um okay so the next one is hello i am contacting you because i'm doing a bit of research for a general health and mental health project i'm working on uh i stumbled upon a page of your site binary jazz slash blah, 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 slash ASMR. I figured I would reach out. I've been featured in Yahoo, ADAA, The Mighty, AMHCA, Good Men Project, Thrive Global, Health Commu, et cetera. And as a result, the mental health and overall wellness of individuals and families has, been, has become something I'm increasingly passionate about. In short, I'm involved with a project that is looking to educate more individuals about mental health topics by possibly working with platforms like yours. I decided to contact you because I noticed platform. you're linking to one of the leaders as it relates to health related topics. <sighs> CDC.gov. Uh, Hold up. Are we saying CDC long, is an expert in health related some things? Long address to something, but I don't <clears throat> yeah. know what it is um, off the top because uh, it's not. Are we sure about that? URL. <laughs> Do we validate? No, absolutely not. Uh, so you might be open to what I have in mind. If you'd be interested in hearing more, please let me know. If not, I understand and would understand if you don't respond. Thank you for your time, consideration and time, Marie. Sorry, Marie, for not responding to you for uh, a month. Um, that seems reasonable for a request of this nature. Uh, I'm responding to you via YouTube. Uh, yeah, probably we're not what you're looking for. <laughs> So, sorry your ticket got lost in our help scout, but no. <laughs> yeah, tell them. Yeah. Our, our platform <laughs> politely declines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I do feel good about being called a platform, though. <laughs> Between that and a content creator, you're on a roll. 2019 is coming up, Gary. Okay. Now, with that out of the way, uh, what subject would our next bot tackle? Allison asks on October 24th. Oh, it's such a good question. I have thought a lot about bots um, recently um, for a lot of reasons. Um, I still feel like there is an opportunity to build a, um, what was that bot we had installed for a while? Um, that like helped uh, the, the bias, bias spot. Bias, bias spot. correct, yeah. Yes. I feel like there's a great opportunity for a better version of that. That um, uh, that would actually be like a valuable thing for, you know, a lot of humans. Um, I also feel like 
there's there's opportunities for bots to be um, um, more helpful, and maybe not necessarily like the Slack bot style, and maybe not like the Twitter bot style, but like uh, I think about how I use my phone, and if there was a bot that could help me be um, mm. like have these like this concept of like. Um, like deep profile stuff. Like my phone is great when I'm at work because I use it for notifications. Like it's another screen that I can look at like a preview of email without being interrupted and decide do I need to deal with that now? And the same thing with Slack messages and I can turn off messages, notifications on my computer entirely, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't want any of that when I walk away for the day. And I need a bot that can be like, okay, great. We are no longer in work profile. We are now in home profile, which means things like, you know, people in my favorites when they text or call, like you're darn right, I want to hear from them. So. It's really weird to me that that's not like a use case that, that really seems solved. And I feel like the solution is a bot that can go in and be like, oh, I'll just change all these settings. I mean, because it's, it's probably a dozen settings that I would change if I was doing it on a regular basis. There is. Well, I just leave bot, it on mute all the time. Well, there is a Slack app that I've started using at work called Clockwise, um, which mm -hmm. takes your calendar. But it take and it can take multiple calendars. You can you can add your work calendar and your personal calendar, and it changes your uh, Slack status based on whether or not you have things going on in your day. Um, yeah. And it also automatically sets your do not disturb status while you're on a a call or or have a meeting. Um, and then if other people are using it, then it tries to find gaps where your two schedules can align with each other to schedule new events between people um which is kind of cool but it kind of is a, a it, it kind of is an all or nothing thing because if everybody yes. isn't using it then the people who aren't are the problem because they yeah. can't align their schedules with your schedules in the way that it's meant to do so i've used it and it even has the thing where you can say like schedule a meeting against my adjacent meeting so i don't lose time between meetings right. which is cool yeah um yeah. but the problem is that it's limited to slack like i need like a whole yeah. life bot you know, I think they call those personal assistants. <laughs> but I'm sure oh, you find one fiber. What's that? Yeah, I probably could. But who? I mean, they're going to walk over to my house and turn my phone settings over for me. Seems like. No, they're going to pull all your pay. calls. You just say my phone number is this number, and then they will forward all your calls to you, and that notifications. Dream, that and, dream big. Yeah. Does, is that is that that's gig economy? Is that good or bad? Yes. Oh. The answer to your question. What was yes. the did, so um, in the good place? They had that episode where they talked about like all the decisions that people have to make. Like it's impossible to be um, good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think about that a lot, and it is destroying me. So. Like Amazon. Oh, God, we're, we're almost out of time. <laughs> the Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.